attackers. Waste of ammo. Took everyone by surprise. Super waste of ammo. I get that they're evil, but also this is this is just pristine parade formation. And it just it goes through anyway. So that's Bill. But it gets reported to the sun of the hemisphere as Paul called the grandfather worm. Yeah. And he rode that worm real as good. As if he like as if he did it on purpose. What we should do is look at this room previously on Dune. Paul and Lady Jessica are the sole survivors of House Atreides, but they are able to join the Fremen on Arrakis. The Harkonnen are evil, the Emperor are evil, the Bene Gesserit evil, Spice is evil, Worms are evil, Sand is evil, it gets, it's, it's everywhere in its course. What did you think about the, today's movie, Dune 2? Dune 2, overall I gave it an 8 out of 10, which is high for me. Um, there are lots of problems though with it. There's weird tech which I don't think fully makes any sense. Um, there's forgotten logistics. Right? They have these massive armies everywhere. I mean, people and weapons and fuel and maintenance. Nope, not a problem. Not a problem. Send it all. No problem. Uh, we've got great houses, which is like this callback to the, I don't know, medieval times. I don't even know. It's, it's like a huge step backwards in social uh, progress. Uh, the economic system is unclear. Like, how do people eat? How do people farm? I've never seen a farm. I've never seen a farm. Um, I've never seen a ranch. Like, where's the cattle? You know? Um, what's what's the... How do people get water? It's just unclear. They can't just keep, like, killing people and grabbing it from corpses. Um, <laughs> there's there's operations blunders everywhere. Like, let's tighten up these operations, people. We got, we got to tighten them up. Can't be having all these mistakes. Terrible tactics. I don't even know what they're thinking sometimes. There's terrible strat strategies planet wide. There's the medieval fighting, like problems left and right. But I was immersed. I was feeling it. I was feeling it. So I gotta I gotta give it a high score. Uh the world fit felt strange and weird and futuristic and like I didn't know what was going on all the time. I liked that feeling. It looked great, it was acted great, so I gotta give it an eight out of ten. Uh Kind of a weird review, I guess. What did you think? <laughs> you gave it such a high score for so many things that went wrong. I gave it a <laughs> 5 out of 10. Super cool visuals, nerd fantasy, the girl falls in love with me. For me, I'm just trying to be like a normal soldier. I'm not even trying to climb the ranks. The girl still loves me. I don't want to do evil, but I'm thrust into greatness. This is this is ticking all the boxes for my nerd fantasy. I love it. However, there is, it was, it's a weird movie. It's a weird movie because there's twice. Twice there was weird timings. And it's it's jarring. I was like, what what is going on here? I was My immersion was broken. So the first time is when you jump from the desert. Paul is sent out into the desert to become a man, to become a Fremen, to to learn how to live in the desert. And and Johnny, Johnny goes out there and helps him out. And they're like learning about this water filter. And then, bam, we're in a fight. And I was like, what? The, I guess Paul, uh, Paul passed it, I guess, right? The second time, the second time this happens, they're down in the southern hemisphere, and Paul is he drinks the the blue liquid from the worm, and then and then Johnny's like, I'm going north, and then we're up in the north and in a fight. So second time, it was weird, weird, weird pacing to the movie. Just, but I get it because like you can't have it like drawn out, do another like sandstorm crossing, but also it was such a big deal to cross the sandstorm, and then from then on, like not a problem. Weird, weird, weird. Also, there's weird tech imbalances, but maybe it's okay because. The Fremen and the Harkonnen have different battle strategies, different techniques, but really the Harkonnen should just be slaughtering the Fremen done easy peasy. Easy peasy. Overall, overall there's really good drama. So so I feel it. I feel like the the tension. I feel like the importance of the events. And I like how Jessica and Paul rapidly ascend to be these these like um religious leaders. They're like like the, all the people, all the Fremens are just they, they fell into the trap. They fell into the trap that the Bene Gesserit set up like eons ago. And also, I really like how the Bene Gesserit, they, they're very good at playing these multiple threads through time. So if Paul doesn't pan out, they got this other guy that, doesn't, that is ready to be their, their chosen person. They got other threads and other planets. And that's exactly right. That's exactly what the Bene Gesserit should do. Just have multiple threads running throughout the course of history. Super cool idea. Nicely executed. But also weird timing, weird pacing stuff. Uh, but nerd fantasy, I'm okay with it. Ready to talk about the movie? Let's get into it. Let's do it. Here we go. This is the Space Diary by, I guess it's the Emperor's Daughter. I don't know her daughter. name. She's the Emperor's Daughter, and she's writing a diary about what's going on on Arrakis. Let's listen. Imperial Diary, year 10,191, third comment. The battle for Arrakis waste of ammo. took everyone by surprise. Super waste of ammo. There were no witnesses. The Harkonnen operation. 
It's already yeah. burning. Stop, stop, guys. <laughs> what do you mean there's no witnesses? It's the whole planet saw. That's right. So I guess so. people on planet Arrakis saw the Harkonnen come down mm-hmm. and kill all the Atreides. However, beyond that, like I don't know if there was communications off planet. I see. Like, so you're from, saying from the rest of the galaxy's perspective, they just may be like, uh, House Atreides, I don't get messages from them anymore. But I don't know. But is this a, is this some kind of weird messed up classism we're listening to? They're like a bunch of poor people saw it. They don't count. They're not witnesses. That's right. Our people didn't see it. Therefore, That's right. therefore we don't it doesn't count. It. Yeah. Also, she is the emperor's daughter. So if information gets all the way up to her, then it's almost at the emperor. So I wonder if it's one of those things where it's like people don't talk around the, about it around the emperor because it's a highly political thing. Like the emperor does what he does. Like don't question it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Could be. So she's like, I didn't hear about it. Therefore, there's no witnesses. Nobody. Yeah. But everyone on every planet's talking about it. <laughs> and when she enters the room on every planet, everyone's like. Shh. Let's see what else she got. Operation was perpetrated overnight without warning or declaration of war. By morning, the Atreides were no more. All died in the dark. And the emperor said nothing since that night. Wait, so, oh, hold on a second. So she's like it happened overnight like we had grand armies operations ships i mean this doesn't happen overnight this takes weeks months of planning to get all these things into fighting shape operationally ready overnight what am i saying gosh does that mean that the emperor's daughter is not aware of what the houses are doing with their militaries because it's like the harkonnens just just killed people i guess i don't know like Right, so I guess they have maybe the emperor has really poor intelligence. They have no idea what the militaries of the houses are actually doing. Plus, she seems super naive, not understanding that militaries take time to build up. She's like, it happened overnight. That's because that's when I heard about it. it. Was it happened quickly to me? Maybe she is just very junior. Like she's not really ready for the emperor's role. And so from her perspective, effectively, she's an intern and she's like, and things just happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess this, I mean, this is all from her perspective. Yeah. It's not been the same, nor have I. His inaction is difficult for me to accept. For I know he loved you, Bledo Atreides, like a son. But my father's always been guided by the calculus of power. This would not be the first time the Harkonnens have done his dirty work. In the shadows of Arrakis lie many secrets, but the darkest of them all may remain the end of House Atreides. I mean, is the Emperor some sort of political power-seeking person, or is he just born into it? That's a good question. I mean, she's talking so, about, like, he's, he's, a, he's manipulating the power, such a power-hungry son of a bitch. Like, you were born into it just like he was. That's what right. And, if, and in fact, if he doesn't do it, then she's not going to have power. Yeah. What are we talking about here? That's, that's just being in charge. It's being in charge. You're, you're being in charge. So even if you don't want to play political games as the person in charge, I think you might have to. Because have people to. underneath you are playing political games. And if you want to see your country or your, I don't know, kids PTA, <laughs> or, or in this guy's case, the emperor, mm-hmm. like if you want to see your empire function correctly under your vision, I think you might have to play political games. Right. So this is like kings and emperors of in our history. Mm-hmm. Where they they on paper have like absolute power over the realm, but you got to play political games because there's powerful people all over the place, and they were overthrown with civil wars and palace plots on the regular. Yeah, they had so, like generations of incest because they were playing political games with mm-hmm. the leaders of other countries. But like, if, if you don't, then your family, your bloodline, can be done. Like, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I'm not sure what she's talking about here. Of course, he's, he's got to play political games. He's Even if he doesn't want to, he's forced into it, for sure. Yeah. Got to get the spice. 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 Cool painting. Mm-hmm. So on the Harkonnen planet, we see a parade, and it's it's amazing. It is amazing. Like, I get that they're evil, but also this is, this is just pristine parade formation. Like, like not a single person out of rank and file. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like they're bad. They're they're like they're they're clearly laid like the barren planet, like is all dusty and, and, and polluted. And like they're bad people, but like like they're fascists, super bad. But god dang, look at that line. Look at that line. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. So good. I mean, it's bad. They're bad. They're terrible. They're bad. They're, they're bad. bad. 
but like the organization required for this, the logistics required for this. You got to get everybody fed, clothed, weaponed up, trained up, information lined up, ships on time, just on, get time. Them on time. Yeah, the whole thing. What an operation just to get this. Could you Incredible. imagine their high school marching bands? Like that competition is tight. They're so good. I mean, do you want to know how the marching, the band in this military? I mean, it's going to be top notch. Top notch. It's going to be top notch. You imagine they're like like halftime field shows. Like, oof, oof, that's good. I mean, yeah, this. I wonder. Yeah, the military shows up for a sporting event. Send in the the marching band of the military. Damn, that's a pride. That that would, that would give me a lot of pride in the culture. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, they're bad. And they're probably they're playing like bad. Bad. the the Evil. imperial theme from Star Wars, but they're, they're yeah. but yeah. they probably do a fantastic job. Probably it's probably even better than the original. Do I allow that? Yes, I allow that. I don't know. It's probably evil. <laughs> I bet it sounds good though. Like no one's playing sharp. Everyone's tuned in. Mm -hmm. They're good. It's really yeah, good. Yeah. But they're evil. So, look at it. So good. Yeah. For me, this the just the organizational competence required to get to this level. I mean, look at this thing in the background. Is that a is that a temple or is that a ship? Spice miner? I have no I have no idea what this this thing is. Yeah, but they're all teched up. They got everything ready to rock. Damn. Mm. I mean, okay, it's all dra drab. It's all just gray and black, and there's like uniformity, mm -hmm. and you don't get personal expression. But they're so good at it. They're so good. They're so good at it. So good. I mean, even the individual flags are all the same. Mm. Mm. Conform. So are these are these Harkonnen soldiers? These are Harkonnen soldiers. So weird. We just saw, you know, the Harkonnen soldiers lined up, disciplined for days. But then when they're on the field, what is this formation? What is this formation? You, you mean that they're not in like a smooth line along the ridge? What, what do you mean? Um, so there's there's funny business going on with this corpse. Right here. Right? They see a corpse, they're like, what is this? They have no access to cover. That's right. If they get attacked um, from the front, you got to climb yeah. up a sand dune. <laughs> You're not getting anywhere. Yeah. So they have, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six guys out in the open. No access to cover. Nobody's sword, ready to fire. Sword guys in the middle. Instead sword of guys in the, in the middle. <laughs> There's sort of a sniper guy nearby here. He's mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. hanging back. I, I don't know what this formation is. It looks terrible. Yeah, actually, yeah. Now that you make me think about it, why are they? Well, why are they doing this at all? So because because they have they were dropped off by a dropship. So That's just right. have the dropship fly above and watch them. And watch them. Why are they getting down here where they might get ambushed? Right, so why why would you drop them off? Well, because you need to do an engagement. But there's no obvious engagement here. So stay in the mm. dropship. Yeah, stay in the dropship until it's time. Yeah. And then if you're unsure, bomb the shit out of the area. What's the problem? Yeah, are they getting cheap on bombs? They can't afford them anymore? I don't, I don't know. They're fine. They can drop bombs. What are they doing? They want, they want to do these like pointed, precise squad tactics against the Fremen. I mean, I don't want to do that if I'm a soldier. I don't do that. Fremen know the desert well. Yeah, obviously. Hmm. Didn't understand it. One thing they are very good, though, like these, this assault squad, like I would want to be a part of this. They really put thought into <laughs> taking care of their soldiers. Okay, terrible formation. Look how but, smooth. Whoo! Okay, so I don't got to put a lot of stress, like jump. They, like, float. they got like float tech in their suits. Yeah. They can uh, climb this huge thing. And look at this. This is the key thing. Mm -hmm. Look how good that is. Look good in the knees. Ooh. Oh, that knees. This guy's going to have a long career and like knees aren't going to be messed up. They're going to be good yeah. until he's an old age. Like, heck yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, they're, like, they're, like the evil. they're evil. They're evil for sure. Evil. But like, they really do take care of the soldiers. Yeah. Being in the military is a physically, mentally demanding job. Yep. And here they're just like buttery smooth all the time. Buttery smooth. Yeah. Not a problem. They're not like I mean, they, banged up knees and hips getting into combat all injured. Like, no, no, no. Seat's taking care of it. Okay. So instead of getting to the top of the cliff on like a vibrate like helicopter or something, they just buttery smooth just up the cliff. <laughs> not a problem. Super good. They're evil. Okay, I mean, but they're okay, super evil. But like, not, not, even, not even just the ergonomics of the thing, but also just the straight capability of this tech to like yeah. climb mountains rapidly. 
not not just mountains like sheer cliff faces here and not even like like how would you get over this thing i mean rock climber people like tell me how but it's like you'd have to climb inverted behind your back and like climb crest over this yeah, yeah. i think in a modern military we would just send an aircraft with people in it and drop them off at the top yep here we don't need air support we don't need any aircraft to do that that's just incredible capability Mm-hmm. get this tactical advantage just rapidly and, and escape any worms yeah because you're on rocks so you can escape the worm. you yep. can float above the sand so you're not you don't need to do any funny random walk thing you just sort of ha huh. yeah yeah <laughs> why are they going down the sand dune when they could just float across it float across it yeah Okay, but for the ergonomics, super okay. good. Super good. In fact, imagine if we had this tech today for oh my gosh, somebody who lost his legs or elderly people just floating yeah. along. Yeah. They'd be more capable than regular people with legs. Like, like outside of combat, you're talking about just regular civilian life. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't have, if you, you're missing a leg, I don't know, you lost it somehow, whatever, it's not my business. But then you can just go upstairs and like, mm, I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm at the top, not a problem. Yeah. You just Heck float yeah. right up the stairs, yeah. And even elder, elderly people with struggling with mobility, just floating around, not a problem. I mean, I mean, if you're at a building, you have if you're in a wheelchair, then you have like the ADA compliant compliant ramp, right? But then, yeah. how do you do hiking with, with float tech? You can hike on anywhere you want. Sure. Oh, well, that's right. You can join your friends for a hike. Just float on by them. Yeah, this would, them. This would revolutionize the ski lift industry. No ski lifts anymore. No Free. ski lifts anymore. Free. Yeah. Just float up there. Float up there. This tech might be overpowered. The more that I think about it, there might even be more consequences. That's right. You make big ones of these, you strap them to ships, now your ships can fly. You got spaceships. That's right. So I'm still confused about the tech, especially the military tech in this universe, because yeah, they have these shields and stuff, and they're like, but why are we engaging with swords when we have sniper rifles with good optics? Let's take a let's take a look. So they're on top of the cliff. Ooh. Zoom in. All the way some magnification oh precision laser and then boom what are we doing why why don't the soldiers get get far away and get high that's right, that's right. yeah i mean i don't i don't want to just fight with swords with people who are good at sword fighting i'll just pick them off from a distance what are we doing yeah why don't they get a bunch of people over here on this other ridge just lined up with sniper rivals in fact <laughs> these people here cover them those people out there cover these guys and if any fremen yeah. walk up you just pew 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 laser done Right. You could, in fact, you could drop teams off at the peaks of all of these things and, and reconnaissance teams. I mean, you're talking small teams. Sure. And then anybody, any Fremen that show up, just they're toast. Super, just super zoom, zoom way the heck yeah. in. And then laser accuracy. Yeah. Boop. And clear the desert that way. Why not? Yeah. So I guess Harkonnen are, I mean, to be fair, every society is good at some things and bad at other things. So they really thought about how to take care of their soldiers' bodies. They really thought about how to do the zoom in technological stuff. However, strategically, they just don't think things through. Yeah, it seems like they're tactically and strategically naive. I don't know how to say it. Naive is the right word. Yeah. Like, they, they, It's like they don't know the tools that they have at their own disposal. Right. They got, they have teams of scientists who are able to and engineers and to manufacture these things dial them in and then they're like we're not going to use them on the battlefield interesting i don't know if the harkonnens have scientists and engineers or if they outsource it i i, I mean i don't know what the yeah. dune universe is like yeah. maybe there's like an engineering planet that really that makes these things i don't know which is not important compared to the spice planet but exists right and in fact, the, <laughs> it's the weapons <laughs> that take control of the spice planet. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, on the other side of the spectrum are the Fremen. And the Fremen really do not care about ergonomics. No, no, no. I'll do it. Like, I get that Oof. this is Jamis and you killed him and you're going to do the respectful thing and carry him. But here's like here's a dead body, and you're carrying it with just your hand grip, like your grip strength. Like yeah. you're, you're gonna get tired. You're gonna get tired walking through the desert, and now you're and now you're gonna drop the body, and, and why not why not load it on your body? Like like either carry them or, or or with your with just directly on your body or with some straps. 
like like my my brother-in-law he had to carry this this refrigerator up a flight of stairs so he and his friend got these straps that go over your shoulders and then underneath the fridge and so they weren't like grabbing onto the fridge with their hands like he just stood up like a normal normal squat also this is a buckle this is a buckle right here like it's designed to buckle but then for whatever reason the fremen have failed in their buckle technology and it's not it's not just paul like this guy up here is also just just grip strength in it okay it gets worse. It gets worse because <laughs> it gets worse because yeah. they fight with swords. So like like your hand is tired. Like you're going off clashing. Like may may thy knife chip it. My hand is tired. Like hang on. I got to take a little breather here. Like, it gets worse. Yeah, and you know even if you have the grip strength to do this for twenty minutes as you're moving through the desert, you're you're, you're going to get tired if you're doing this for a long period of time. You need to you need to buckle that in, put it on your skeleton. And your legs and your hips so you can move forward it gets even worse they have water problems you want to limit exertion that's right so if you're exerting yourself while you're carrying somebody you're using lots of water it's evaporating off of you yep so what is this it's a buckle the fremen it's like the fremen don't know how to go through the desert what are they doing it seems like they also don't understand the idea of evaporation that's right so they're always talking about keeping water, but evaporation is an invisible process most of the time. So there might be massive losses from evaporation. And here, if you're sweating because you're exerting, the evaporation is taking the water away. Gone. Gone to the desert. Just, just carry it. Just okay. carry it on and the strap. They would fix this pretty quickly. They'd be like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the body. He's in one of the thumpers. Like somebody left it there. I don't know who it was. Warm gum gets it. Yeah. In the Fremen base, there's this underground lake. Let's watch. Pool? 38 Pool. million decaliters. 38 million decaliters. So my question is, is this possible? Is it possible to have an underground pool in the desert? What would it need? So I think the answer is yes. I think so, too. I uh because I think it does. I think stuff like this does exist in the deserts we have, mm. like pools and caves and stuff. So let's think about this. We want no leakage, so that means that the lake, the the bed of this pond, has to be sealed, which I think is possible. Sealed, or I guess, I guess, yeah. Good point. I wasn't thinking about earth deserts. Earth deserts. If you dig deep enough, you get to the water table. Like there is water deep down there. So no, mm-hmm. either no leaks or it's connected to the underground aquifers. Well, that's right. So I guess if the bottom of the this pond here is beneath the top of the water table, yeah, you might. The be water okay. actually flows into this thing. Would it flow into this thing? It would just keep it stable. Okay, I guess d- depending on the difference in head pressure. I see what you're saying. So like I if, guess if I'm, this pool is below the water table, then the water will flow into it. If it's above, then the water flows mm. out of this pool into the water table. And if it's exactly okay. equal, then it equilibrates. I see what you're saying. So if the if the water table beneath is at higher pressure than yeah, just yeah. gravity, then this may be providing the pressure to keep this thing high. They this think it's high. like some big spiritual thing with all their dead friends, but it's actually just water flowing from gravity. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's under some pressure because of the the earth of the terrain above it is pushing it down, keeping it under pressure. So we have this opening that provides the, oh, the pressure okay. above to support it, something like that. But let, let's let's imagine this is an actually made by them, like they dug it out, they conquered it up. It has nothing to do with the planet's water table. Is it possible to have this underground pool? So I guess if they make it, they're probably not going to go down to the water table because I assume exactly. the water table is pretty let, far let's do, down let's there. Let's do it sealed off in the water table. Yeah, so sealed, sealed off. off. So they yeah, yeah. that would mean they'd have to manufacture when they made it. They would have to seal everything up okay, for the I long like term. And then at that point, I think you have to control evaporation rates. Okay, it's fairly dry air, which right. I mean, I would think would mean controlling airflow into this chamber. You want still sure. air and still humid air. air, and you want so, little air f- exchange with the outside. So I guess if you have it at the end of a long tunnel. Then it's just mm-hmm. harder for air to circulate around. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I, I guess you want some circulation because if you have it's too stagnant, aren't you going to get growth? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like 
I guess algae, it dep depends on the microbes like, of this planet. They may not just, they just may not have it. Just may not have it. But, but bacteria though would grow. Oh, there's there's got to be bacteria. Yeah. Maybe there's have, no algae or like fungus, but I guess if it was very high salinity, that would keep it clean. Oh, like okay. You get a salt salt pool is okay. So okay. you need to be you need to be fairly deep into the mountain or mm -hmm. underground somehow, so that there's very little air exchange. So if it does mm -hmm. evaporate, then it's not like out into the world. It needs to be cool enough. You, yeah. You, or, yeah. Because if it's too hot, it'll just boil off. Mm. I guess it doesn't need to be dark, but dark does help it stay cool. Yeah. And I, I do think you have to worry about growth. Yeah. But they didn't say you could salt it, but that means they did say you can drink it. It is fresh. It's fresh. So I wonder how, how they keep it clean. Unless they have water filtration. I don't know. I, I don't know if he means drink it like directly. Maybe he does. Yeah, then Same I don't know. Thing. If they put salt in it, then they would never be able to drink it. It wouldn't be like... Unless they have, like, desalinifiers. Which they may have. They may have, like, desert tech. Like, they have that thing where you can jab it into a human and then, yeah. like, it extracts all of the water but mm -hmm. with the chemicals. Maybe they have something that can, like, remove salt. Right. I don't know. Possibly. Possibly. I don't know. But it seems... Maybe. It seems like a, a firm maybe that you could have an underground pool. Yeah, I think I think it's very, very possible. Given the right cave, the right circumstances, I think it could make it work. And plus, they built it, so people probably understood how to build and where to build. So yeah, it seems plausible to me. I wonder if there's like other caves that have been forgotten around the planet. <laughs> probably, probably. I mean, they're all covered in sandstorms. Exactly so, right. You'd, yeah. you'd lose track. This was interesting. So the Bene Gesserit have started this prophecy from millennia ago, which is actually a really cool way for science fiction to do actual prophecy, not just like some book said it and it happened. No, no, no. This is like the Bene Gesserit set the ideas in motion and the events in motion eons ago, and then they made the prophecy occur. So for the people who are looking at the prophecy, they're like, oh my Wait, gosh. What is the prophecy in this case? The prophecy in this case, I'm not exactly sure, but Paul Atreides is somehow represents the the one who was written to, to if, come if, to Arrakis. If, if I remember. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Paul is the person, he's like a guy from the sky would come down and he would yeah. lead the people to water, to water planet. The paradise, and, yeah. And I think the mom, the like, the, the mom would be the Bene Gesserit, like the, the mother of the Reverend Mother, and yeah. she would drink poison and then come back. You're right. And so then, and he, so the religious he people. He would ride the large worm. Yeah, exactly, events. exactly. Yeah. So religious people are like, it's a prophecy. Whereas, whereas Janice, Johnny, Johnny here is like, mm -hmm. it's not a prophecy. Like her people said that they would do it. So of course they would do it. So I just find it, I found it very interesting that they would know that her people wrote that. That's a good point. Because that's a we if they know, if if the Fremen know that it is a created thing, that is a strong counter argument that could, you know, reduce belief in the Fremen. So somehow the Bene Gesserit's plan leaked. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why the Fremen I mean, I, even would have I, wind of that. I can imagine that it's this is speculation on her part that mm -hmm. that the that the Bene Gesserit made uh, the prophecy, and then from the religious person's perspective, they're like, "You're you're just trying to undercut. You're trying to. Of course, okay. you'd say that her people wrote it. In fact, it's blasphemy. Is exactly what he says. I I see. Like, I guess if, if if there was if there was knowledge that it was written by the Bene Gesserit, it would certainly be lost in time, like thousands of years. Like stories change, stories morph. People can't tell it right. Mm -hmm. I just think that the Bene Gesserit should also handle this idea, get rid of, not get rid of it, but lessen it. Ah. I guess they've done a good job, but I'm inter it's interesting that they were able to explicitly say her people wrote that. Well, well, I guess you write it into the prof into the prophecy that when the person comes down, the, the Lisan Al Gaib, when this person arrives, there will be naysayers, and there you go. Mm -hmm. She's wrapped into the prophecy. She's now playing her role. I see. 
and you make the naysayers kind of ambiguous, and so she's playing her role as a naysayer. I, okay, okay, exactly. I like it. Okay. Super cool. Vi- super cool super- the way the Benny Gesserit plays out through time. Yeah, very cool. This is interesting. This is one of these, like, I don't know, they call them water catchers. So somehow this is grabbing the tiny amounts of water vapor in the air and turning it into drinking water. How is this working? I mean, I see this net structure, which yeah. does feel like like survival shows, how they do this. They mm-hmm. like put a plastic tarp up and then it catches that morning dew. And then the morning dew like runs down and you collect it, mm-hmm. I guess, maybe. So, so I guess the net gives you lots of surface area. True. All this intricate part, all the intricate surfaces in the, in the net. Mm-hmm. But that would mean you have to, you probably have to cool the net, keep the net really cool so the water would condense onto the net. So yeah, I guess if the net is essential, how how does it work here on earth? Like you can only collect the, the dew from condensation, like in the, in the morning. morning. So I guess the plastic or in this case, netting has cooled overnight. So yeah. So you, the whole apparatus is cooled overnight because the sun is down. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. somehow you keep it cool in the shade as the air warms up around it. And maybe for that it's... window of a couple exactly. hours, the condensation happens. I think that's right. The net probably can't, it must be a special net that can like hold cold for long periods of time. Because it's long enough. High surface area gives you lots of surface area for condensation, but it also gives you lots of surface area for warming if there's a slight wind. That's right, right? Because it'll catch more of the wind because it's a large object. Yeah. yeah. Plus, the, if it's a net, like it's a fibrous net, like we would here have here on Earth, instead instead of it being like fishing line net, it's like an actual rope. Now that's a wicking. So if you don't get all the moisture out, it'll actually oh, draw the moisture oh, yeah. up into the into the net and then be pulled away and pulled so, away by the windy wind. Yeah, so it must not be a wicking net. It must somehow be able to, as soon as the condensation occurs on the outside of the net, it's, it's dribbling down. Dripping down, which I guess gravity would help. Gravity would help it drip yeah. down. Maybe it's like a tubular net where it's hollow on the inside. There's some capillary action going on. But the capillary protect- action is good and bad because, because if you get a water drop here, it'll help suck it down. But if you get a collection of water down at the bottom, capillary action, like, like cap- first of all, capillary action, yeah, when you have a narrow tube, water can get pulled up it against the gravitational force. So if you look at like your straw in your drink, the water level in the straw is a little bit higher than in the rest of the cup. So if there's a water collector down at the bottom here, capillary action will pull water up and then you won't collect it. You'll evaporate it out. So maybe down at the bottom there, there's some kind of one-way valve situation. Oh, that'll do it. Also, is that another person there? Holy crap i've never there are two people here oh, yeah two people <laughs> oh no they're all being collected i see they're all being collected yeah okay i thought they were like in the desert by themselves like nope <laughs> <laughs> and these must be permanent stations you're not you're not putting this on your backpack oh no no although that's a terrible idea to have these permanently installed because then one of the ornithopters could fly by and like oh look there's fremen structures <laughs> that's where Actually, the fremen yeah. are yeah, you would target infrastructure like this. It'd be hard to replace. It's important. Yeah, they need it for to survival. Yeah, survival exactly. And I could easily take it out with one of those mounted guns that we're going to see later. Pew, pew, I wouldn't pew, have pew, to. Pew. Dun, dun. I don't. We wouldn't have to get down on the ground, but I feel like the Harkonnen would. They would. They, they would. would. Something that confused me in this movie. Is are is what what are what are the rules for how the shields work? I didn't. I did not understand it. I just... Okay, okay. First off, wh- what are the Harkonnen doing? What are they doing? Like, why are we getting on the ground with swords? Get your get your ammo situation in line. Get your fuel situation in line. Get your maintenance situation in line. Get all that squared away. Mount up, saddle up, and just go gar- start killing people out the window of your... I don't know, your dragonfly your, helicopters. Your dragonfly helicopters that the Fremen cannot, they don't have. You have like a clear sky advantage. Yeah. What are people with swords going to do? They're going to die. <laughs> they're going to throw They're gonna throw their sword mm-hmm. in the sky and yeah. then their hands are too tired. So it's not mm-hmm. going to reach all the way up there. Yeah, they, yeah, the Harkonnen should just be flying. Yeah, for every mining operation, 
you know, you send a couple of dragonflies, you send a couple of spotters. Oh, you have them orbit. You, yeah, you just fly around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You maybe clear the place first. Any any action, you just lay down fire. Bob's your I mean, uncle. It's it's very effective, and Bob is in fact my uncle. Let's yep. watch more. It's sealed. We're only open when it fires. I know that. What do you think I'm trying to do? Uh, I'm trigger. Spicy. On my signal. Be ready. Go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. okay good I mean, shot. cool. Cool. It worked. But like, the explanation was clearly was clearly, you have to wait until the person in the helicopter is shooting because then the shields come down and then you shoot them at the same time. But then mm -hmm. when Johnny actually shoots, let's see it. Let's see it right here. Let's see it right here. Nope. It's gotta be. No, it's gotta be much earlier. Cool. Okay, here. Nope. It's it's probably a, like a ten second clip, twenty second clip. Here it is. The shield will only open when it fires. I know that. Okay. What do you think I'm trying to do? So the rule is the shield has to be down in order for the projectile to get in. That's that's reasonable. Yeah. Which means that and and. Paul explains it as when the gunner is shooting, the shield comes out. That makes sense because yeah. the bullets have to be coming out. So then Johnny sh shoots. Oh, he no. also says the shield's open. Okay. Which, 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 which I'm guess, okay with. If, if they can localize shields so on the far side, they're protected, yeah. but near the gunner's port is open, yeah. then you okay. shoot at the gunner's port because that's where it's clearly open. But Johnny doesn't do that. So now it's time to shoot. Right now, but he stops shooting. The, the shield should up. be back up, and the it is up. up. And the projectile comes in, and it just it goes through anyway. So, 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 my question was: Was the shield up, and the projectile can get through no matter what, or was there some like shield ramp up time after the shield went back up after shooting that there was a weakness and it could get through? Ah, so you're saying Paul is right in principle, but he's a bit sloppy with his words. So instead of being like, shoot when the gunner is shooting, he should say, there's a small window while it's still charging up. And as long as you're in the window, you're okay. But I guess the optimal time would be when the guy is shooting, yeah. you want yeah, yeah, the round yeah. to land, because then there's yeah. no shield. It's gone. Cause, right. But there's still a window where after he's done shooting, the shield is charging back up again. There might be a window... I mean, that's the only way I can make it work because otherwise, otherwise the shield is still up. It's up. The, sh the shield is up. Like and that, that also means that John was watching him shoot at at Paul. <laughs> like that was the when when the gun was firing. That's the time to shoot right then at the same time. I mean, actually, as soon as Paul starts running, you kind of want to be ready. You're kind of firing almost like almost and, before he leaves because you got right. travel time. That that's when right. he's when the gunner starts shooting, your round kind of needs to be in the air, right? So that when he's as he's firing, round lands, right? We don't know the speed at which the the shield open and closes. It could be timed with the gun, right? In fact, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. I would exactly. have like, little... like like old World War II planes. Like the propeller was timed with the machine guns. You could shoot right through the yep. propeller. That propeller. Yep. So yeah, it so looks I... like here they got lucky, right? So they got it right by accident. Mm -hmm. which i'm okay with because combat combat's chaos uh you know and they didn't time it out right they got lucky i'm fine with that but it is a low probability hit right i still think this is an advantage for the harkonnen this, you, if you have if you deploy five of these gunships i doubt they could replicate this with any regularity uh, i see what you're saying they might be able to get so the fremen they might be able to get one harkonnen ship but the other four will just circle and shoot Circle and shoot, and it just uh, it just could be unrelenting fire. It just can't stop the ships. Still doesn't feel good. She should she should have shot while the gunner is shooting. Otherwise, this feels like an inconsistent rule. The only way that this rule yeah. that works that the only way we can make it work that this shot works is that there's a recharge time when she got in there while the shields were weak. I mean, to me, that is the explanation because the shields are up. The shields are clearly the shields up. Are up. And 
It's a fast moving thing. It should bounce off the shield, according to the rules we've been introduced in part one. In in according to the rules that we saw just a few minutes before this, where she shot a shot and it bounced off. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're filling in blanks. Filling in blanks. Minus one to the to the episode <laughs> rating. <laughs> Okay, Spice Miner Machine. I wondered about this in Dune 1. How does the Spice Miner actually mine things? Well, first thing to notice is the design is different this time. Before, there were these like blocky square things, you remember, in part one? Oh, and so here, this is a Harkonnen Miner. And the oh, other one okay. was a planet side miner that just belongs to the planet. Okay. I guess. Or maybe these are version twos, maybe? I don't know. Version 2s, okay. Okay, let's watch what how it interacts with the ground. Okay. So the first thing... Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, first thing has got these pointy boys, and they have treads to walk around and poke, 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 poke on the ground. All right. Okay. But that's just the front, so let's follow along to the underside. And as the friends are crawling through, you see the back. So you get these these guys that are stomp, 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 smash, smash, smash. Yep. And I think that is it. <laughs> yep, that's it. So this is how the spice miner works. Mm -hmm. um, this It must be because this is the only way that it interacts mm -hmm. with the ground. And so it just punches the ground. And I guess whatever floats up is spice. So it's, it's some type of like mass dependent. Just, it's just like when you, when you, mm, what is it? Pen for gold. You're like, the, the gold is super dense, so you mm -hmm. shake the water and then the lighter dirts and rocks float off to the side. So here, and so, and so you filter and you collect the gold. Here, mm -hmm. I guess the spice is light and floaty. So you punch mm -hmm. the ground and then the spice floats up and you vacuum it. Um, but that's terrible. <laughs> that's that's absolutely terrible in terms of throughput. You have this gigantic machine that like that rolls along the desert, and you just punch, 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 punch the surface. Like like scoop, scoop, scoop the sand, filter it through the machine. You can get not only the surface of the sand, you can get whatever many meters deep into the ground, and then just then just process it through. Like this is super inefficient. So, I agree. But what if the spice is only on the surface layers? And so scooping would just get you a bunch of extraneous sand, whereas maybe the spice is on this like couple centimeter thick layer on top. So you just want to stir that up? So I, I but, would still just scoop the couple. I would scoop, in, if it's five centimeters, I would scoop 10 centimeters and just filter it from right. there. <laughs> so I wouldn't pound the ground because now I'm pushing that layer further into the ground. I want to I want to scoop. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I want some kind of scooping action. Yeah. So even if it's uh, even if I want even if spice is deep in the sand, I want a big scoop. I want a big. I, I want a forward scoop that drives in, and then and then sand falls on top, and then I and then it goes through a conveyor belt inside my machine, poops out the back, right. just pure sand. And, and let's say I need to aerosolize it for some reason. I need to like kick it into the air. Well, I still scoop. Then I have some agitator you know or something it, to kick it into the air. I would do a rolling tumbler, just like a cement machine. Like you see those like cement machines, like the cement trucks. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, just roll it and tumble it, and if it's light and particly, it'll float up, and then you can vacuum it. Anything that's heavy just gets pushed out it's the butt. Filtered. Yeah, so you uh, could like machine. Yeah, you could like create filtering mechanisms, so you know what you know what the spice is, and you know what yep. what it is. You know the densities and other of other rocks and gravel and different things, yep. which you create a filtering mechanism within the tumbler. Yeah, and still don't, if anything you have floats to up like spice, you put a little water spray on it and it captures it. Mm -hmm. Nothing left off of the atmosphere. But I think the important thing you're saying is you got to scoop. Like, scoop. I don't see why you wouldn't scoop. I don't see why you would punch. I don't see why you would punch the ground like this and get a little bit of mist coming off. Mm -hmm. like. It's either big. I mean, you want to dial in the size of the scoop. Could be big yeah, scoops, could sure. be small scoops. But, sure. Or it could be a front scoop where you're coming in, grabbing it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're still scooping. Scoop. So I, oh, how could we make this work? Why would you punch the ground? Maybe it's, it has to be activated with percussion. But then, it, then it's percussion and then scoop. You hit it. You hit it. Or you first. you collected everything and then you percussion it inside in your factory in the city. That's right. You're in a dangerous location here. Yep. So filtration might fast not. Grab. I want a fast grab. 
Okay, so you want a fast grab and a fast filtration, but not a full filtration. Yeah. You don't want to bring a bunch of, you don't want a bunch of heavy chemistry. stuff to come with you. It's still a scoop. Weird. But Weird. I think we've answered the question about how the spice miners work. They punch the sand and then a little bit of spice comes up and they suck it up, I guess. Mm hmm. Hmm. I mean, it must be because this is the only way, this is the only two ways that the spice miners interact with the ground. There's the punchy boys and then the needle guys. I mean, unless there's something we don't see. But we, we, see, we see on the, they go under. We see, do we see the back? We see so that's, I guess this is one side. It's possible that it's like farther behind. Like have we seen every, oh, I think this is the back. Cause I don't see any needle boys. Needle boys are in the front. Yeah. And then these punchies are in the back. I guess is, could there be a third section that we're not seeing there? I mean, maybe, but maybe as what is shown to us in the movie, I think this is it. Yeah. yeah. There's some like side action there. Maybe it's suction. Maybe they're pulling the sand up. Ah, they punch down there, a little vacuum. But yeah, then you just suck scoop. it up. The scoop. The scoop is just so much simpler. And it's not like it's not like a, gosh, it's not one of these scoops. It's a mm -hmm. forward scoop. So as you go forward, it just yeah. everything in front of you just funnels in. I guess if no scoop is the way to go. Scoop is the way Why to would go. you suction? Maybe. That's just. You haven't. You got. You'd have to have pump infrastructure. You'd have to have cleaning scoop. You know, even if it's like dirty and grimy and nasty, it's 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 still gonna work. It's, it gets the throughput. I want to collect right. a lot of stuff fast. Right. With low maintenance requirements, and uh, I want rapid turnaround yep. after go back, come, come out, go back, come out, go back. I want rapid. So I want simple. So I want scoop. <laughs> if I was the emperor. Who would I put in charge of Arrakis? I would put in charge someone who has a lot of military might because they need to protect it, and then whose right hand man is an engineer. Seriously, engineer operations, good. somebody like that, right? And because operations is a problem as well. What are we doing? We've got a dangerous area with fremen popping out of the ground. Why are we on foot? Why are we? On let's foot? let's stay get get high on the roof. And scan mm -hmm. with your, your rifle. What are we That's doing right. on the ground? We're just going to die. I mean, How can we help? We've seen in this movie and also the first movie, like someone could be out here with a laser beam and mm -hmm. these foot soldiers, have no way are they going to be able to interact with them. They're going to spend, they're going to spend like three, five minutes running up mm -hmm. the sand dune to get to the laser guy. It's too late. It's too late. And, and if we want to get back onto the, the tract machine, the spice miner. We've got to go up this inconvenient ladder or it's it's one just, at a time ladder let's let's not leave the safety of the big machine that's right i think if you want to defend it you're either up high in the helicopters dragonfly helicopters in the spotters or on the roof mm -hmm. or you could have a deployable team in the the crawler but only deploy them when needed you keep them in there it's nice and safe maybe they're never deployed on a particular outing Gosh, why don't you just have a pillbox on top where they can they can just stand on top and then be armored up in the side of the box and then pew 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 outside little ports. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you would you might want you might want the option to deploy, but it might not be very often. Right. Stay inside. Stay inside. Pillbox. I don't get it. Also the Please. Fremen have this mind tech. It's Okay, he pops out of the earth. Sand. Come on! It's like magnetically attracted to it or something. I guess so, yeah. Also, so the first question is where are Fremen getting this? Like Fremen yes. are not a tech people. Like where are I they haven't building? seen yeah, I haven't seen a factory, I haven't seen, you know, an institute of engineering. I haven't seen any of that. Where this is manufactured. Are they buying this right. from off world? I think I think that means they're buying this from off world, because how else can they get this? So that means it has to be smuggled in because it's not going to be an official sale. Hmm. Which Gurney Alec, so Paul's previous teacher, says that he's a smuggler. And I think this particular mm -hmm. spice miner is a smuggling spice miner. 
I think. Uh, but this causes so many problems. Like you gotta, you gotta. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta buy it. So you got a financial transaction. Which, yeah. what are you gonna transact in? I don't know. Then, what you, the gotta, you, gotta, then you gotta fly it down. You got yep. this heavy thing. You gotta, you gotta get it off the smuggling device, the smuggling ship. Store it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Spread it out for deployment to all the different people. Like this is a huge operation. Plus, like, you got There's probably requirements about storage because this is an explosive. Do you see any handles? No, the Fremen are carrying this by hand, by grip strength. <laughs> They're carrying this heavy thing across the sand, but just by fingertips. Wait, okay, so let's say there is a casing for transport, okay, that you which means they okay, disposed okay. of it. They disposed of it during transport, which means waste. the desert is littered with these things. That's right. Also, I'm just this, not seeing this... the organizational structures for the Fremen to even deploy something this advanced. So I've seen it. They're too disorganized to be able to do this. Yeah. That's not even talking about how it works. It's like metal detector. Super cool though. Super cool. Super cool. Super cool. Super cool. Okay, so as spice miners are going around down around the planet, we see it from the Harkonnen's perspective. Look at these laser guys just hanging out by the cliff. Hanging out. Pew. Cool. Knock it out. How easy is that? I mean, powerful. And in the Harkonnen's base, like somewhere on the planet, the lights are flickering. But like, this, this is a separate issue. <laughs> like, yeah. right? like, like imagine an oil rig goes down in the Gulf of Mexico and then the lights somewhere in Oregon are like flicker, flicker, flicker. Like that's a, that's, a, that's a separate issue. So it looks like the Harkonnen have power issues. That's right. In, in, in uh, Arakeen, which I guess is Arrakis City. And it's a, it's so bad that it's affecting you know, the command and control center. The control room. Like, they don't have their backup powers? Like, what is going on here? Yeah. And during critical operations, they're getting power flickering? What? God, that'd be so frustrating. At the same time, like, I don't want to be the guy that's like, uh, sir, I know the... Right. I recommend... I'm not recommending anything. Yeah. I'm not yeah, I'm not recommending anything. Do we have power problems? Nope, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it. Yeah, sir. My I eyes flickered. All right, Harka, you got you're perfect. You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like here, everyone, everyone here is like, that's fine. I'm not saying anything. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, everyone in the room is like, that's fine. Don't have much else to say. Oh my gosh, these people. This is the okay. Where are they? This is the Harkonnen planet. Where mm-hmm. are they? They're on. They're on Harkonnen planet. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's so, Harkonnen planet. This is some kind of. So it's like a. There's like a black star that gives off sort of this black and white radiation, I guess according so. to our eyes. And so everything is in black and white on their planet. Mm-hmm. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Look how many people. Yeah, that's right. Right. Just the logistics to be able to house this many people. That's right. Because, I mean, the concession stands, the behind you know the bathrooms yep 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 bathrooms Tickets, you, you know mean, just a tick master imagine if you had one single turnstile gate like it would take several days to get everyone no, yeah. no 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 like they've designed this place very nicely and and then once they're in right there's no real there's no advertising there's no extra stuff oh i mean it gosh. is it is clean what clean, clean lines no advertising as you walk it around the world oof yeah oof so they've got they've got like workers doing ticketing, they've got workers doing concessions, but you see none of it during the performance. Oh, Incredible. all behind the scenes, all behind the scenes. So the Harkonnen care about aesthetics as well. Totally. Mm. And then, whew. And, then and then they're evil, but they're evil. They're so evil. I mean, look how evil they are. Yeah, we even got white cloaks. Look at how evil they are. are these these are the Bene Gesserit. <laughs> oh, there's the Bene Gesserit. Okay, never mind. Or at they're least not evil. She oh, wait. is for sure. Are the Bene Gesserit evil? I don't know. Just sort of I, think, a... I think they're kind of they're kind of unknown. They do their own thing. Like they're not just bad. They do their own thing. I don't know. They're kind of neutral manipulators, I guess. Exactly. exactly. Like a section thirty one or something. Yeah. Okay. Don't don't make my heroes bad. <laughs> it's interesting so that these like they're evil and like the planet makes their I don't know, just it's interesting color scheme that they're like super white like that. Yeah, super white. I get, they're saying it's the black star causing them to be super white. 
I mean, I it just guess makes them I'm, look super evil. Super evil. Like there's no skin color. There's no tonality. There's no variation. They're just like this white evil people. Just murderous. It just it makes them look sickly and murderous. Yeah. Kind of weird. I guess it's possible. Like like if you if if you've ever done like nighttime astronomy stuff, you have those red lights, and so then your mm-hmm. your eyes are only seeing that one color. I mean, I guess white light is white, but maybe this is how our eyes interpret their yeah. combination of their star and their planet's atmosphere. I guess when doing astronomy and there's red lights everywhere, it's not like everybody looks evil when that happens. That's oh, that's Bill. He's red. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It's not like this. <laughs> yeah, where he's like super white, whited out and evil as heck. Yeah, just like ready to go kill people. And there's so many of them, you can't stop them. It's like devoid of color, like like yeah. not even lip color, just 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 super whitened up skin. Yeah, Whew. terrifying, terrifying, weird vibe. So Paul learns how to ride Shai Hulud and the the sandworms, and this is how this is how prophecy not prophecies this is how rumors are made. Like they really mess it up. I tune it myself. So Stilgar says he tuned the thumper. Like Stilgar okay. tuned it. Unambiguous, Stilgar tuned it. Paul just shoves it in the ground and yep. it does this thumping thing. And he gets a big one. He gets a super big one. As written. Called the grandfather worm. But like, did Paul call the grandfather worm? Like, first of all, Stilgar tuned it. Paul just shoved it on the ground. Yeah. And then the worm that came up was the worm that came up. It wasn't like it wasn't like Paul was like, Shai Halud, give me your grandfather worm. Like, just whatever was there was there. But then but then the, the religious people, they're like, no, he called it. Like he called it on purpose. Like, Paul got this by accident. It could have been a baby Maybe. worm. He got whatever he got. Yeah. You can't take those thumpers and like dial in. I want, I want the daddy worm. I want daddy. the mommy worm. <laughs> daddy I want the granddaddy worm. Right? It's kind of, it's dialed into the ears or arteries, auditory right. sensors of the worms, and whoever, whatever worm happens to be nearby, Whatever's nearby, it yeah. likes the sound. Yeah, right. I mean, it, okay. If and if, if you could tune in the thumpers for the specific worm that you want, yeah. then Stilgar did that. Stilgar then, did that. Then he's like. He got a big worm, but like, but that's what you dialed it into. That's what you dialed it in. So I guess he still was able to ride the worm, the mm-hmm, granddaddy sure. worm. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he still didn't call it. All right. He got yeah. whatever he got. Yeah. It was either random chance or what's his name? Shilgar? Stilgar. Stilgar called it. It wasn't, it wasn't Paul. But it gets reported to the sum of the hemisphere as Paul called the grandfather worm. Yeah. And he rode that worm real as good. he like... As if he did it on purpose. Super not on purpose. The Harkonnen. The Harkonnen set out into the desert to find the Fremen. And the boss is super intense, but I don't understand why this guy's sick. Today, Wadi dies! Okay, just tell me. Nobody heard you. Still negative, my lord. Super calm sky, super calm desert. Nothing. What do I have to do? Everything myself! And this guy's kicking. Like, what's going on? Like, I can understand if he was on a boat and like rocking back and forth, his tummy feel bad, his equilibrium all messed up. But like these, these bird, these uh, planes, these these dragonfly planes, super smooth, super buttery smooth. And I can understand it if there was like explosions, like we're going into death right now. It's terrifying. Like, but this is a pretty casual cruise. Like this is like a private jet right now. So my interpretation was it wasn't any kind of air sickness. It was like the pre-combat jitters. And I found this weird because, like, are we are we humanizing soldiers now? Like, well, what are we doing? I thought we didn't care about the everyday work a day soldier. And I, I don't care. That's a good point. He's, that's a good point. He's got emotional problems. I don't care. He needs to go die. Damn. <laughs> Damn. I could join House Harkonnen. <laughs> but none of the people in any of the houses care about the little guy. He's that's just right. another foot soldier. You're either so, a general or you're a nothing. So why why did this guy throw up? Because he's nervous. Little bitch. Everyone else around him is totally fine. Ice cold. Totally fine. Maybe little this bitch. is his first mission. That's okay. Nope. Little bitch. 
Okay. Okay. See, we shouldn't humanize people we don't care about. Right, it feels bad. What we should do is look at this room. What we should do is look at this room. Boom! This look at nice that. I guess this is her, her special room. Like, this is mm-hmm. her emperor's daughter's room. Mm-hmm. What I thought, what draws my attention, which is super cool, is mm-hmm. this door. Yep. Round door. But also, it's super annoying. Because, like, okay, I hate I hate this. Okay. As you're walking through, first of all, you yep. have to pay attention to where you're walking. You can't be like thinking about something. You can't be listening yep. to a podcast or whatever. Like, you got to watch where yep. you're walking because you can trip over this. Trip over this, you can fall down, bust your mm-hmm. knee, bust your elbow. Not going to feel good. Yep. But also, it's really it's frustrating for our maintenance <laughs> because this this gradual move into a horizontal surface yep. is going to collect dust, going to get oily from I don't know stuff around, yep. and that means that somebody, some servant, has to come in and like wipe this down daily. Like so annoying. Like design this thing for smooth, easy maintenance. Well, I mean, why does the whole room feel wealthy, palatial, whatever the word is? Well, because there's a lot of inconvenient things, right? Like cleaning the circular door is a pain in the ass. These windows, who are they helping? Like it's not. Okay. There's nothing in the room. It's very impractical. So I it, see it feels wealthy right okay i see what you're saying you're saying that it's the annoying things make it wealthy because it means that if you're wealthy enough to have this annoying inconvenient stuff it means you're wealthy enough to have someone paid to come take care of it for you right i mean minor things like i gotta clean the circular door you got somebody who's getting paid for that that's true ain't no poor people paying for that they'll get a swing door okay but you fell from my trap because look at this look at this corner of this room (laughs) <laughs> look at this okay so so i'm imagining how you clean this yeah there's this this gutter here right so you mm-hmm. just you just hose down the floor you scrub it yep. with a brush or whatever and you just push the water to the edge and then and then it just drains away this is actually super well designed and now that i said <laughs> that this makes sense okay so you just you come in here with a hose you just spray yep. down you just spray everything down with a hose maybe a little brushing if you want and then and then spray down with the hose and then water which just runs off the edge and if you look through if you look through the door i see the beginnings of another drainage canal mini canal right right down a little bit down a little bit down right there that that right there okay so no not there left left the left side this this part right there yeah yeah okay does that look like like that i see this is a little channel here a little groove channel is a better word so this is uh this is actually a Okay, so it's aesthetically nice, like geometric shapes, mm-hmm. big, powerful, mm-hmm. and on the surface, it looks mm-hmm. like it's super annoying to clean, but actually, it is quite nicely designed. Because mm-hmm. you could come in here with like a power washer, yeah, and just clean the walls, the ceilings, the floors, and it all gets washed away. Like if you power wash carpet, you're in, you're in a mess. <laughs> how, yeah. how, how are you going to dry that out? But you can power wash this stone, not a problem. Not, not a problem, problem at all. yeah. Yeah, and then you bring in one of those Zambonis to polish it all up. Oof, so slick. Okay. Maybe okay. the emperor is losing it. He's losing it a little bit. He's like, my servants need a convenience. That's why he's losing. He's weak. Or maybe this used to be a room where they sacrificed people, and so the blood would drip down there. I like that better. That's much better. That's better. And then, it, it yeah, it gets channeled down into some vat, which then they drink from. That's evil as heck. That, what? Dang, 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 dang. 